So last week, we started talking about destiny. The first thing we wanted to know was, what is destiny? We define destiny to mean, destiny is your assignment God placed on your heart or in your spirit before you came to planet Earth. Destiny is your calling. As far as God is concerned, your destiny was finished even before he created you. God always finished something before you start something. So what he has called you to begin, he has already finished. He finished your destiny before you came here. He told Jeremiah, he said, before you were in your mother's womb, I formed you. I already called you to be a prophet. Now you, are, you don't have no choice but to be a prophet because that's what you were created to do. Amen. Likewise, you also have a calling. Something God has called you to do, that's our assignment to figure it out. Hallelujah. So your destiny is your predetermined des uh, assignment by God on planet Earth. Your destiny is your future. Hallelujah. Your destiny is bright. You have a future in God. Amen. 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 Say, I have a future. I have a future. You're not living day by day and see where life takes you. No, you have a future. Amen. And it is our job to figure out what that future is so we can go back in alignment with our future so that when we die, God can say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Can you imagine you die and then God said, I gave you this, 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 and this to do. You didn't complete any. And then your excuse is, God, you didn't know. Ooh, have you ever lived on planet Earth? God, it is terrible. I have to work nine to five. I have to feed my kids. I have to pay my rent. God said, if you had stayed in my calling, my provision was in my calling. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You didn't have the provision because you wanted to go hustle for yourself. That's why you could not find any provision. Because you were trying to fix life by yourself. When you step into God's calling, all your provisions fall in place. If God would have to send a raven to feed you, he will. The prophet Elijah was in the brook. God sent a raven to feed him. And God would send somebody, even a raven, to feed you. So we must know what our destiny is. Destiny is fulfilled over time. So the second thing we need to know is what is time and how do we operate in time? God created time just for you. God who created time, he himself does not live in time because he don't need to. He created time for you so that you can practice in time how to live in eternity. Notice when he created you, he did not put you in eternity straight away because you would not have been ready. So he gave you a trial in time so that you can perfect time to step in eternity. Eternity is forever. So your condition, your present condition, you don't want to live in that condition forever if it is not the perfect condition. Amen? Amen? So time now is a slice of eternity. God took a piece of eternity. He put a beginning and an end to eternity. And that end and beginning and end is called time. So now we live in time. But the Bible says there is a, there is a time for every purpose under the sun. So which means you have a time frame to fulfill your destiny. So that's pressure. You must figure out in time from the beginning to your end what you must do on earth so that your destiny or your purpose would be fulfilled. Hallelujah. So let's proceed. What is your destiny? What is your own destiny? What do you think your destiny is? Have you ever asked yourself that question? What am I placed on planet earth to do? What is my calling? Why am I here? Are you ready to die today and face God and say, God, I have finished my assignment? If so, well done, thou good and faithful servant. So what is your calling? Have you ever asked yourself, what is my calling? 
And that's why we're going to be praying this week if you don't know what your calling is, so that God can reveal to your spirit what your assignment is, what your calling is, what you are assigned to do. We need to know. Everybody has been called to do something. Everybody is gifted to do something. Your job is to figure it out. Some people have been called to play football. Some people have been called to cook. Some people have been called to be comedians. Some people have been called to be garbage collectors. Talking about garbage collectors. When I was driving trucks, I went to pick up garbage cans at one factory. It was so impressive. I looked around, I said, wow, all this just for garbage? This must be a multi-million dollar operation. So I spoke to one of the guys in there and he said, oh, let me tell you about the guy who owns this place. And I took pictures. Unfortunately, I didn't bring the pictures, but I'll show you the pictures one day. I took pictures of the place. It was so impressive. He said, this guy, since he was young, he could not stand to see trash in the streets. He knew his calling since he was young. They said he would take a trash bag and in his neighborhood, he would collect garbage and put them in his trash bag and put them for the garbage man to pick up. And then go to school. And then after school, he would walk his neighborhood and still collect trash. He knew his calling. He was doing a service to the community. They said he was a good man. But he had an idea. How could we keep our county or our city clean? He was doing that. And other people were helping him do that. It, nobody told him to do it. He knew that was his calling. So he kept keeping, picking trash, picking trash. He went to university. He graduated. And guess where he applied to work for? Who he applied to work for? His local county, he wanted to drive the, 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 the garbage truck. He has a degree. He wanted to drive the garbage truck. So he dropped, they, they didn't even give him the job. They refused him the job. He kept applying for that job. He eventually got the job. He was driving the garbage truck. He went around collecting garbage in his neighborhood. And then he got promoted, and now he knows the ins and outs of the garbage business. So one day, he decided he needed money to start designing his, you know the stuff you put out in the street every day they pick, they, they pick your garbage? He makes those now. He supplies them now to counties, to different cities, all over the United States. He is now a multi-millionaire, if not a billionaire, collecting garbage. Collecting garbage. I believe I should be saying, hearing an amen for that. Amen. That man became a multi-millionaire or billionaire collecting garbage. He knew his destiny the moment he was in elementary school. What is your destiny? What is your assignment? Have you figured it out? The thing that you're most passionate about is your calling. Whatsoever you are very passionate about is your destiny. That's what you've been called to do. The thing that you love so much that they don't even need to pay you to do it, that's your destiny. In case you didn't know, now you know what your destiny is. Something that would say, oh, brother, can you do this for me? How much should I pay you? Oh, don't pay me. I just love doing this. Something you can even do for free that you love so much, that's your destiny. How do you take your destiny to the next level is what we're trying to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. That guy started picking garbage for free. Now, they pay him just to manufacture garbage cans. What is your destiny? You should, this week is a week we should spend praying, fasting. Father Lord, what is my destiny? Now that I know my destiny, promote me, excel me in my destiny to take my life to the next level. Amen. Your destiny is not to struggle. You come home and you sleep and you repeat the cycle day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out, five years gone by. You are at the same level. 
That is not God, what God has called you to do. Mm -mm. Amen. Amen. Say, I will. I will. I have determined. I am determined. To find out. To find out. What my destiny is. What my destiny is. You have a destiny. Hallelujah. You have a future. Amen. And your future is bright. Tell the person next to you, say, your future is bright. Your future is bright. Tell the other person, say, you too, your future is bright. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I want you to know that everybody, not some people, everybody has a destiny. Everybody. Your job is not the means to an end. Your job is a means to fulfilling your destiny. Hallelujah. Your job is a means to fulfill your destiny. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't latch on to your job as if to say that's your life. Now, I might edit this, but let me say this. We have a trucking business. I hate to say this because I don't want it to seem like I'm bragging, but I'm not bragging. The truck is fine. If I step on that truck right now and go dust down Florida, I make what people would make in a week, maybe in a month. One trip would put a lot of money in my bank account. But because my calling is to preach, I packed the truck voluntarily. And you've never seen me begging bread because God would not let the righteous forsake him, nor his seed begging bread. Amen. 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 So my job now is an option. I choose to jump on the truck if I want to. If I don't want to, the truck sits. And I am paying for, for, it, for the truck to be packed where it is. Why? Because I am called to preach. Amen. 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 So my job now becomes an option. I don't say, oh, I got to go drive the truck. I got to go drive the truck. I got no. If I have time, I go drive the truck. If I feel like it, I would move the truck. But the truck is there. Your job is a means to your destiny. Don't latch on to your job as if you're latching on to your life. The Bible says, he that saves his life shall find it, but he that releases his life for the... Shall... I got it mixed up. You know what I mean. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Now, let's turn to Romans chapter 8, verse 29. Everybody has a calling. You cannot say, I don't have a calling. There is no such thing. You have a calling. You yourself, only you yourself know what your calling is. So your assignment this week is to pray and fast for God to accelerate you in your assignment or in your calling. Amen? Amen. Your assignment is for God to show you and accelerate you in your assignment. Romans 8.29 he says, For those who God did for no, he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son. I'll read it again. For whom God did for no, I believe God knew everybody that entered planet Earth. There is no one person that came to planet Earth that God did not know. Nobody can sneak into earth without God knowing. So everybody that came to earth, God knew them beforehand. Amen? He says, for those that he knew beforehand, he predestinated them. So in other words, he gave them a destiny. He gave them a future. He gave them an assignment. And the assignment is to be conformed to his son, Jesus Christ. So everybody now is called to reflect Jesus Christ. Everybody. But you say, but pastor, I am not a Christian. How can I conform to Jesus Christ? I am glad we are having this conversation because I have breaking news for you. Before you were even born, God has already predestinated you to become a Christian. Whether you become a Christian or not is up to you. To be or not to be is not God's problem. It's your problem. You have to decide whether you want to be. 
But I want you to know that God predestinated you before you were born to conform to Jesus Christ. You will have to answer to that one day. But I just have breaking news for you that you were called to conform to Jesus irrespective of your religion. I have to say that as a preacher, without no offense. Hallelujah. And those that he called, and those that he predestined, he called. Now many are called, few are chosen. Why is that so? The ones that respond to the call or the ones that answers to the call, they are the chosen ones. So if you say yes to the call, you are chosen. The one that refused to answer to, to the call, they are not chosen. When you answer to the call, you are chosen. So if you are not chosen, it's because you have not yet answered to the call. So first you have predestination, then you have the call, and those that answer to the call, he justify. Justification is righteousness with God. is right standing with God. So when you answer the call, God justifies you. You are now justified in the presence of God. And those that he justified, the Bible says he glorified. Glorification is the anointing for the job. That's why some people can preach better than others because they are anointed for the job. That's why that garbage collector made millions of dollars because he's been doing it faithfully when nobody was paying him. Now he is anointed for the job. The anointing is an unction to function. Amen. The anointing is an empowerment to excel. Hallelujah. The anointing is a power to move you from kindergarten to PhD. The anointing will just gravitate you naturally to the top. Hallelujah. No matter how somebody wants to put you Hallelujah. down, Hallelujah. they cannot put you down Hallelujah. because you have the anointing, which is the unction to function, Hallelujah. and that anointing will take you up. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, I am anointed, I am anointed to excel. To excel. Say, this is my season. This is my season. To excel. To excel. Say, I have a destiny. I have a destiny. And my destiny is bright. My destiny is bright. My future is bright. My future is bright. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Moses was called by God. He was minding his business one day. He was tending to his father-in-law's flock. Not even his. His father Jethro, who was the Midianite, he took his flock out in the wilderness just being a shepherd. Moses was a good pastor. A pastor, you know, is a shepherd, right? So I just want to lay the foundation right here, right now. So Moses was taking care of somebody's business. He was being a good pastor or a good shepherd. So one day God called him. God said, Moses, he said, he said, what is that in your hand? He said, a rod. Now, I want you to pay attention. He said, a rod. The rod represented his livelihood. The rod represented his occupation. The rod represented his business. The rod represented his job. So God said, Cast the rod on the ground. Pay attention. So he cast the rod on the ground. And the rod became a serpent. Ooh. And God said, pick it up. Now, I don't know what serpent would give you its tail to pick up. For you to pick up a serpent by the tail, there has to be a fight. No serpent is going to volunteer his tail for you just to pick up. If you want to pick a serpent up, he'll go. Pss. Why was God doing that? He was showing Moses how to take care of serpents and scorpions. He was trying to show him how to conquer your situations, your serpents and your scorpions. 
The Bible says, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out demons. They shall take up serpents and scorpions. They shall drink of any deadly thing. It shall not hurt them. So if God wanted to make sure he passed the test of how to master serpents. So he said, take up the serpent. You have to master the thing that is bothering you. You have to master your serpent and your scorpion. You already have the power in you to do that. Whatever is stopping you, I command in the name of Jesus that you master that situation. Go and master that situation. Go and master that situation. Don't let your situation master you. You have been called to conquer. Don't let the serpent do this and back up. Conquer that serpent. Amen? Amen. So God said, pick it up. Eventually, he picked it up and it became a rod. Wow. Rod, serpent, rod. But this time when he picked up the rod, it was no ordinary rod. That rod now has the power of God built in it. Amen. That rod now is a supernatural rod. His occupation now is not an ordinary occupation. His occupation before was ordinary, but now his occupation is supernatural, backed by the power of God. Hallelujah. I want to announce to you right now, if you hand over your occupation to God and then pick it up, your occupation will be transformed. Your occupation would never be an ordinary occupation, but your occupation would be backed with the power of God in it. Your occupation would no longer be just an ordinary occupation. You will no longer be an ordinary driver. You will no longer be an ordinary cook. You will no longer be an ordinary nurse. You will no longer be an ordinary cleaner. You would be a super, super charge. Hallelujah. 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 Because your occupation now contains the very power of God. Hallelujah. This week. We are all going to hand over our occupation to God in prayer and fasting. Glory, glory. Amen. This week, that's why we're going to fast and pray. We're going to hand over our occupations to God. Amen. And ask God to transform our occupation. Amen. 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 So now, God said, Moses, with that new job you have now, Go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Wow. Then Moses said, uh, uh, God, uh, God, you know I have a preaching pediment. God said, who created your mouth? Did I create your mouth? Go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Now, can you imagine? Moses, like, who is it? Me, me, Moses. What do you want, Moses? God, let his people go. Pharaoh would have said, say it again, come again. He started making excuses that he's not qualified to do the job. Some of us make excuses that we cannot, we are not qualified to do our jobs. You are more than qualified to do what God has called you to do. Amen. Hallelujah. You are more than qualified. Amen. When God asked me to preach, I was like, God, you know my English ain't that good. Sometimes I'll be shooting that language left, right, and center. <laughs> Even now when I go listen to my tape, my verb and noun don't agree. I'd be like, Mariano, wow. The queen could easily arrest you and put you in life imprisonment. But is that going to stop me from preaching? No. no. I preach. Amen. Sometimes Amen. I shoot, not by intention, but hey, sometimes I miss my Sorry. target. Am I going to stop? No. 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 Let me the push they go before. Amen. We'll make the correction later. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your calling is your calling. Hallelujah. Do your calling as best Hallelujah. as you can. Amen. Don't care what people say about you. Amen. 
I told my daughter this one. They came crying from elementary school. They said they talked about me. They, said they talked about me. I said, listen, sit down. I said, whatsoever people say about you is none of your business. Amen. It is none of your business what people say about you. Right now, people are saying about you. You just don't know about it. Yeah. What you going to do if you know what they... I don't care what people say about me. Don't care what people say about you. It is none of your... Business. Let them talk. If people are talking about you, you are very important. Yes. If you're not important, important not, people that are not important don't make the news. No. So don't worry about what people say. Don't worry about what people say. Yes. So, Moses was a shepherd of sheep, goats, cows, whatever. Now, God called him to be a shepherd of people. I want to announce to you that Moses was the first pastor of the biggest church on planet Earth. Hallelujah. Moses was the very first pastor of the church. Hallelujah. You say, well, pastor, pastor, stop, stop. The church was not born until the day of Pentecost. <laughs> Moses' church was born on the day of Pentecost. The Bible says when they left Egypt on Passover, Pentecost was 50 days after Passover. Yes. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 19, on the third month, they entered into the land of Sinai. Hallelujah. And on the tenth day, it went up. So that's 50 days. Amen. And 50 days, the smoke and the fire came down. Amen. And the law was given on that day. Hallelujah. The same thing happened in the New Testament. Amen. 40 days after they left Egypt, so the promised land, 40 days, Jesus left the earth and he came to Mount of Olives. He ascended into heaven. Ten days later, 50 days, the Holy Ghost came down Hallelujah. just like Mount Sinai. Amen. 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 The Holy Ghost came down in the upper room. So did the, so did the Holy Ghost on Mount Sinai. Amen. The very first Pentecost was not in the upper room. Nope. The very first Pentecost was in Mount Sinai. Amen. Exodus 19. Now, Christians don't know this. It is strange to them. And they say that's when the church was born. No! Go to Acts, book of Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. Let me show you that there was a church in the wilderness. Acts chapter 7. Stephen is speaking. They're about to stone him to death. And he was giving his testimony. He was explaining what he knew best to do before he died. And in Acts chapter 7, verse 38, Stephen said these words, And this is that was in the church in the wilderness. Now I want us to read it together so that you know you're reading it from your Bible. Acts 7, 38. Let's read the entire verse. After 2. 1, 2. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai, and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. So there was a church in the wilderness, according Amen. to the Bible. And Moses was the pastor of that church in the wilderness, according to your Bible. What is the church? The church is a body of believers. The church is the ecclesiastical body of Christ. So if there were believers then, there are believers now, there was a pastor then, and that pastor was Moses of the church in the wilderness. The church was not born in the book of Acts. The church continued in the book of Acts. Fifty days after they left the first Passover, God gave them a covenant which, was called the old, which we call the Old Covenant. Fifty days later, after Jesus was ascended into heaven, God gave us a new covenant or the renewed covenant. Amen. If Pentecost means 50 days after Passover, and the first Passover was when they were leaving Egypt, are you trying to say 50 days was thousands of years in the upper room? What happened to the immediate 50 days after they left Egypt? Amen. But that's where I'm going. I'm talking about your destiny, our destiny, Hallelujah. our future. That was just a plug-in. Amen? Now, 
You have a destiny in closing. I want you to know that your destiny is in Jesus. That's why Satan tries to give you one. Because you don't seem to know what your destiny is, so it preoccupies you with something else that you call your destiny. He even gave you one. He said your destiny or your star or your horoscope. You're a Sagittarius. So you occupy yourself. I am Sagittarius. I am Leo. And some people even say, I am cancer. God forbid. You are not cancer. Amen? Now, John chapter 1, in closing. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same word was in the beginning with God. All things were made by the word. And without the word was not anything made that was made. Amen. In the word was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended the light not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to be a witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to be a witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that came into the world. That was the light that lighteth every man that came into the world. Jesus was the light that lighteth every man that came into the world. Jesus is the one who gave you your destiny when you came into the world. Jesus is the one who gave you your future when you came into the world. You cannot say, I don't have a future. You cannot say, I don't have a future or I don't have a destiny. Jesus gave you one on entry and on departure. You are going to be held accountable for your destiny. Enlighten you with your destiny. That's why Jesus says, you are the light of the world. Because he gave you a light. And that light was to light up the world. Your light is so bright that you have a light to light the world. Floodlights could light up stadium. But your light is brighter than the light that can light up a stadium. You have a world light. Your world light is your destiny. Why are you trying to be a head light? Stop being a tail light. Some of you even have reverse lights. Say, I am a world light. I am a world light. Because I will fulfill my destiny. Because I will fulfill Say my like destiny. Say it like a minute. Let's stand up. Let's stand up and begin to do it.